Welcome to episode 56 of The Lunch Bunch. It's a very special day today. It's Remembrance Day in Canada and in the Commonwealth, and it's Veterans Day in the United States. Take time to remember the sacrifices that were made so we can be here and do this. Today we're going to be talking about memory, how the internet affects how we remember things, in particular short-term memory. So let's go. I'm going to start by introducing who we have around the table today, and we have, oh, and we have a, a, a familiar face and a guest today. So we'll start with, we'll start with BL. BL, how are you doing? Oh boy, I'm doing well and I'm thrilled to be here. How you doing, Randy? I'm doing well and, and thanks to all the veterans past and, and currently serving. Scotty, good to see you. And glad to be here, very glad to be here, right. I was going to say, what what's the subject matter we're talking about today? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, go ahead, I was just being a smart ass. Some of what is said about how our brains are fractured and blah, 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 is normal way that our brains work, but I do believe the research that says that multitasking does not make you more efficient. Is it hurting our brain? It's just changing it. I would like to see scientific evidence that information overload is affecting memory. And yes, VL, uh, multitasking does not actually exist, simply more stops and starts. I have a great long-term memory, but my short-term memory, I think I'm noticing that as such. I don't know if it's because I read most of my stuff on the internet, but I do know that when I do read things digitally, whether it's on a Kindle or on my iPad, whatever, I don't retain it as well as when I read a book. Depending on our DNA and our genes and, and our upbringing, we're all going to lose some of our memory and things like that through natural aging. So let's not confuse that with the shift that's occurred. And yet it might be that we don't have enough young people who have grown up with the current technology that they have learned how to incorporate it in just as effectively going forward as we have in terms of the written language. When you're saying do we always look to the future, I think we have to look at both. To put everything in context, we have to have a big picture of things and I think that's one of the problems with reading digitally is that we don't have the context. The content is now being provided by Google Search and context will be Google Glass and Google Contacts and eventually a brain implant. <laughs> Did anybody leave any tips? I'll start with one only because we're talking about memory and, and my short term as I said before is, is really fading. I really count on the Evernote Web Clipper app. I really depend on that heavily. I highly recommend if you do have Evernote to use the extension the, the clipper. I picked up a handy little piece in branding. As a brand, you should focus on cause and not effect. If you communicate enough with a customer, you can create change. I'll share an article that lays that out in simplistic terms and gives a good reasoning behind it. I use Digo. You can put tags on your content and you can put it in folders and you can make it public or private, but then you can search your library on your tag. Oh, cool. Is it web based? Yeah, D I G E O dot com. Thanks again, everybody, and hopefully we'll see you next week, Tuesday, 12.15. Take care. Bye-bye.